Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank the Cato Institute for hosting this event. Uh, thanks particularly to Justin Logan for organizing. I also want to applaud Justin for his impeccable sense of timing. Um, Secretary Panetta said recently that, quote, there is a strong likelihood that Israel will strike Iran in April, May, or June. Here we are on March 30th. I think it's, uh, it's, it's impressive that you were able to organize uh, uh, not only his statement, but this conference. Well done. Um, if he's right, uh, Israel might strike soon. And, and if Israel does strike soon, we have a lot of important questions to ask. Uh, what would happen next? How might Iran respond? Would such a strike help or hinder US efforts to deter Iran in the future? My bottom line is that uh, deterring Iran, even a nuclear Iran, is a relatively straightforward proposition. But deterring Iran after it has been hit with a preemptive or preventive or delaying strike, especially from Israel, will make it much, much harder in the future. This is the reason why bombing is a bad idea. A little bit of theory is necessary to explain uh, my argument, and then I'll get into the, the nitty gritty. I Iran is the, the latest example of uh, a longstanding problem. That is, how do you deal with an emerging nuclear power? Um, deterrence theorists and scholars and observers have worried a lot about new nascent nuclear powers for a number of reasons. They have uh, incomplete and immature security protocols. We're not sure that they can be reliable custodians of the stuff. Uh, they have uncertain command and control arrangements. Uh, new nuclear powers are usually flush with nationalism. You know, achieving the nuclear threshold is a moment of intense national pride, and nationalism can be a very dangerous animal. Uh, and new nuclear powers tend to overestimate the benefits of having a nuclear arsenal. Right? They, they make this technological breakthrough, and they think, wow, we've got it. We can do a lot of things in the world with our, with our new newfound nuclear strength. Actually, they can't do that much with nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons have very little use beyond basic deterrence, and it takes nuclear powers some time to learn that. But the learning process can be dangerous. So this is one, these are reasons why we worry about them. Now, up to now, about the, uh, the debate about how to deter an emerging nuclear power has focused on the question of whether or not they are rational. Right? Deterrence theorists say, in order for deterrence to work, you have to face a rational adversary who weighs costs and benefits. And some have argued that the nature of the Iranian regime, as, as Jamie was saying, is such that it doesn't weigh costs and benefits in the way that, that, that we weigh costs and benefits, that it's motivated by ideology, uh, religious extremism, and it might be willing to take extraordinary risks. That is, it's not rational, as we would define the term. I, I think this is an important question of, of rationality, and I'll come back to it, but it's not enough. If you really want to think about how to deter a country like Iran, you have to ask, uh, what exactly are you trying to deter? What kinds of threatening actions are we really troubled by? And th there are four. First, we would like to deter a rapid expansion of Iran's nuclear program. If Iran achieves some modest nuclear arsenal, we wouldn't be happy with that, but we wouldn't want it to go on a campaign of rapid expansion. That would be destabilizing. That would exacerbate all of the concerns that I just mentioned. Right? We'd be especially concerned if they did it uh, covertly. Best case scenario is that they would expand slowly and transparently. That we could probably live with. If they do it quickly and opaquely, we would be very, very nervous. A second thing, we would like to deter the transfer of nuclear materials or technologies to third parties. A couple of speakers have already mentioned that. In the case of Iran, we're particularly, particularly concerned with the transfer of uh, nuclear materials to terrorist groups, Hezbollah. Right? Third, we would like to deter the use of nuclear weapons as cover for conventional aggression. We've heard this already as well, this notion that Iran would be somehow emboldened by having nuclear weapons, that it would be more likely to take conventional risks because it would be confident that we would not intervene. Right? So they would be emboldened either to, to act out conventionally or to increase their support to proxies. Uh, finally, and perhaps most importantly, we would like to deter Iran from actually using a nuclear weapon in war. Right? In one sense, this is the easiest thing to deter because this is the only kind of action for which we can credibly uh, threaten them with our own nuclear arsenal. 
Nuclear threats against all of the lesser kinds of threatening actions simply are not credible. Nobody would believe us if we say we are threatening to nuke you if you do something conventionally. It just would not, uh, it would not be credible at all. But we can credibly threaten to respond in kind in response to a nuclear attack. Right? On the other hand, again, some observers worry that Iran is simply not rational. Right? They're not motivated by old-fashioned Cold War calculations of costs and benefits. Right? Uh, in the summer of 2006, for instance, Bernard Lewis wrote in the Wall Street Journal that according to his reading of Islamic text, and, and I'll quote here, um, August 22nd, 2006 might well be deemed an appropriate date for the apocalyptic ending of Israel and, if necessary, of the world. Right? He had gone back and he had scoured Islamic texts and he said, wow, this might be the day where they decide to just end the world. They've got these apocalyptic notions. Happily, it didn't happen. Right? We made it to, to, to August 23rd, uh, 2006. But, but the sense that this regime is not rational continues to linger, uh, as well as the idea that it is insensitive to our deterrent threats. I think this is wrong. I think that we can deter a nuclear Iran. I think we can deter all of the threatening actions that I laid out earlier. Uh, it will take time, it will take patience, it will take a lot of hard thought and hard work, but it's a relatively straightforward problem. We've done deterrence in the past against equally bizarre regimes. We can do it against Iran today. First, we can deter Iran from rapidly expanding its nascent nuclear capabilities. Some Iranian leaders, like President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, uh, use very heated rhetoric, really over-the-top rhetoric. But other Iranian leaders treat him with, with disdain. A lot of Iranian leaders are, frankly, worried about international prestige and international respect. Right? And if we carefully and continually promise them that a rapid expansion of their nuclear effort will lead to international opprobrium, they might slow down. In fact, I think it's likely that they will slow down. Right? The second, uh, we, we can deter transfer to proxy actors. Right? One way that we can do this is by disabusing of Iran of the notion that it can remain anonymous. One thing that people worry about is that uh, Iran could quietly and covertly deliver nuclear hardware to Hezbollah, right? and that it would be safe as long as it could do this anonymously. We can convince Iran that it can't do it anonymously. Just think about it. Think, think through the actual chain of events. If a nuclear blast went off against Israel or against the United States, who would we immediately look at? Without question, without hesitation, it, Iran would be number one, and Pakistan would probably be number two. Right? We could also indicate to Iran that we've actually made some pretty substantial developments in the science of nuclear forensics. That is the ability to trace fissile material back to its origin. Right? Now there's debates among physicists about how far along we are in this process. All I care about is telling Iran that we're going at a pretty steady pace and planting a seed of doubt in their minds to, to, to dispel again the notion that they can remain anonymous providers. First, we, third, we can be uh, confident about deterring use as cover for conventional aggression for a couple of, of reasons. One, uh, Iran's conventional capabilities are pathetic. Right? They have no power projection capabilities of any note. They have a, a decaying uh, conventional capability. They're reliant on 1970s hardware that they purchased under the regime of the Shah. Right? They've basically sacrificed spending on their Air Force because they know they can't keep up. Right? Their, their surface navy is just not very capable at all. Iran can cause some problems. They can lash out a little bit, but they can't launch anything like, like a sustained conventional operation, especially not against countries like uh, Israel or the United States. So I think that we exaggerate this concern. Well, what about the danger that they increase their, they increase their support for proxy actors? I think this concern is overblown. Uh, as, as a lot of observers have, have pointed out, Iran's history with proxy actors has been tepid at times. When they feel heat from, from the international community, they pull back from Hezbollah. Right? And I don't know why that would change just because they had a very small arsenal of nuclear weapons at their disposal. I think that they would still respond to heat. I see no obvious reason why not. 
Finally, the United States can deter the use of weapons in war. As we said, this is the one case in which we can make a serious and unambiguous threat of reprisal. And I think that threat would stick. Now, unfortunately, so, so my bottom line is deterrence is, is not only possible, but it's likely, and it can succeed. Uh, it'll get a lot harder if Israel launches an attack. It'll be a lot harder to deter all four kinds of behavior. In the aftermath of, of, a, of a strike on its nuclear complex, Iran will have gigantic incentives to disperse and conceal its program. They will basically mimic the actions of Iraq after 1981. This is what we don't want. It will become more covert and harder to deal with in the future. It will be harder to deter transfer to proxy actors for the same reasons. Iran may believe that to reduce its vulnerability to subsequent strikes, better to give the stuff to Hezbollah. It would make sense. In the aftermath of the strike, it will be harder to deter the use as cover, simply because it will be harder to assemble and maintain an international coalition to block Iranian expansion, especially among key regional actors. The Gulf states come to mind. They will face significant pressure to move away from the United States, not towards it. Finally, and, and most worrisome, it'll be harder to, to deter uh, the use of nuclear weapons in war. Deterring uh, the use of weapons requires two things. It requires threats of reprisal, and it also requires assurances. We always forget this. There has to be an assurance attached to the target of the deterrent threat that if you restrain yourself, we're not going to hit you anyways. Right? You will not be targeted as long as you subdue yourself. It'll be almost impossible to, to issue any sort, anything like a credible assurance in the wake of a strike. Iran would have no reason to believe us, uh, and, I, and I disagree with, with Matt Kranig on, on this. Uh, Iran would also face a serious use it or lose it problem. This is a program that it's worked on for literally decades. If it worried that it was going to suddenly lose this program, this crown jewel of its regime, it would have incentives to fire away, and crises would be very, very unstable. So I'll end there and, and, and just, just finish with, with a couple of thoughts. Uh, we have been containing Iran for a long time. We will continue to contain Iran whether or not our politicians say so publicly. What we do and what we say are not always the same things. Deterrence will also proceed apace. We will continue to deter Iran. And this is actually pretty straightforward. And about the only thing we can do to undermine the quality of deterrence is to attack now. I'll stop there.